introduced to the concept of academic research in the fourth year of my medical training, which was introduced as part of the mandatory modules at the, uni my, the university that I, I go to, I still recall this feeling of irritation and frustration at the, the prospect of having to undergo, undertake academic research before this university can, can allow me to graduate. I remember thinking to myself, how is academic research going to impact me? How is this action or this, this undertaking going to make me a better doctor? Well, it took me about eight months, eight months of intensive formulation of research questions and, and, and undertaking research and undertaking data collection and, and before I could finally understand the, the importance, appreciate the importance of academic research, it taught me that I don't have to possess the IQ of Albert Einstein or Alexander Graham Bell for me to identify a problem in my community, conduct a series of investigations in an attempt to solve this problem. I could do it. Now, unfortunately, our society over time has developed this idea that groundbreaking research and world-class innovation can only be done by the US or Europe or Asia. Now, in our defense, this is what history has taught us. If we look at some of the top inventions that have revolutionized our world, inventions that have set the stage for more inventions to come, Inventions like the telephone, the light bulb, or even the internet, these are inventions that originated from these parts of the world, from Asia, from the US, from Europe. And these are inventions that, that have contributed, have, have contributed to the global innovation pool. Now, what about these inventions? The swimming pool cleaner, the CT scan, as well as the speed gun. These inventions have also revolutionized our way of life. These inventions have also contributed to the global pool of in innovation. And if I were to ask you where these in inventions came from, most of you would say from U the US from Europe, from Asia, but most of you would be wrong. These inventions, ladies and gentlemen, are a few of many that originated from the minds of South Africans. What a powerful notion that a developing country like South Africa was able to contribute to the global pool of innovation and revolutionize our world. Now this begs the question, if a country like South Africa could do this, who, which is, by the way, one of our neighboring countries, to give those outside of Namibia some context, if a country like this, that had the potential to invent, to innovate, why can't we? What secrets do they hold that we, we haven't mastered yet. The secret, ladies and gentlemen, is academic research, which we know is the foundation of knowledge that has bred innovation, technology, and development. Now, in my quest to find academic research works undertaken by Namibians, I looked at the national universities, and what I found was a wealth of academic research works. Research works that are not just interesting and innovative, but that have the potential to revolutionize our world, our world beyond Namibia. 
Now, what I also found was that most of these research works, once presented, only stayed in academia. It, they, these research works weren't integrated into Namibian society or industries, which, in my opinion, defeats the whole purpose of conducting research if you can't use it to impact your community. Now, for research to have to truly be of value, there needs to be academic as well as non-academic impacts. The academic impacts ob obviously are, are well known. I want to shed light on the non-academic impacts. For example, impacts on healthcare, impacts on agriculture, the economy, and governance. These are just a few of many impacts that academic research could have. Now, why bother adopting or integrating Namibian research works into Namibian industries? Because, ladies and gentlemen, this paves the way to a more developed, a more self-sustainable, and a more industrialized Namibia. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, but is the whole premise behind the Millennium Development Goals and Vision 2030 which for the world beyond N Namibia are terms that were coined by us to describe Namibia's socio-economic development targets. Now, Namibia has integrated a wealth of academic research works into its societies and industries. This fact I must acknowledge. The works that they've integrated are works from outside of Namibia. And one of the most well-documented examples of, of th this is the research done on HIV transmission from mother to child. And because of this, this, m this research, extensive research that was aimed at finding out the pathophysiology or the method behind the transmission of this virus from mother to child, Namibia was able to embark on a nationwide initiative called the Pre Prevention of Mother to Child Transmission, or as we abbreviated PMTCT. And in just under a decade was able to curb this transmission rate by over 50%. What a wonderful st statistic. Now, as wonderful a, s a statistic th as this is, my problem is we adopt research works from other countries into our society, into our Namibian industries to solve our Namibian problems. Why can't we adopt Namibian research works, which we can all agree is, is rife into our Namibian industries and our Namibian society to solve our problems. Now, Bloomberg rankings recently published a list where they looked at a number of countries um, innovation quotient, as they term it, and they looked at a number of, 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 of factors, one being research and development intensity, productivity, high-tech density, researcher concentration, manufacturing capability, education levels, as well as patent activity. And they published a list of top, f f top 50 most innovative countries of which I've listed the top five. As you can see, the United States tops this list. By the way, Bloomberg is headquartered in the United States. Surprise, surprise. Followed by South Korea, Germany, Finland, and Sweden. Interestingly enough, though, China ranked 29, while South Africa, which was the only African country to make it onto this list, 
behind Tunisia, that is, ranked, f ranked 50th. So they made it just under the wire. So I asked myself, why is it that these countries made it on, on this list and we didn't? Or more importantly, why is it that our partner in the developing world, South Africa, made it on this list and we didn't? In an effort to, to try and answer that, I looked at the World Bank study on research and development expenditure. So to cut a long story short, the World Bank embarked on a mammoth research project whereby they looked at each country's GDP and which sectors contribute to their GDP. And one of the sectors was research and, and development expenditure. Now, to give you guys a bit of context, according to UNESCO's Scientific Advisory Board, investing 3.5% GDP towards science, technology, and innovation is a benchmark for successful, sustainable development. Now, as you can see, the countries that topped Bloomberg's list came very close to meeting this benchmark, if not superseding it. But look at Namibia. We are barely even visible on this pie chart. This is a fact or a statistic that we as a nation need to take stock of. From this data, one can certainly conclude that the countries with the most innovation are the countries that earmark more of their GDP towards research and development and expenditure. Research and, 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 and development. Now, Namibia has a wealth of natural re untapped natural resources just waiting to be exploited by young Namibian mines. One well-documented example is that of the Himba people who have used, who have produced a number of perfumes, cosmetics, and even medicines from a wide host of plants and roots and barks and, and trees. And one of the, uh, the, the roots or the plants that they they used to, ext to extract these perfumes from, caught the interest of one of the major cosmetic firms in Europe. They made their trip to Namibia to sample this, this root, or to, to sample this plant. They took it back to their, their world and they, con they ran a whole bunch of studies and, and tests. And the end product was a marketable new line of perfume that generated millions for this European company. Now there's anecdotal evidence that exists that also seem to corroborate the medicinal products that the Himba people produce, yet there's no scientific research that can corroborate this. My question, ladies and gentlemen, why is it that we are waiting for developed countries to see our potential, to exploit our potential for their economic benefit. A possible research question I have is that of poverty in Namibia. Why is it that Namibia, with its very small population of 2.3 million people, has been battling with poverty 20 years post-independence? It's no secret that we have and continue to receive a wealth of, of financial aid from international humanitarian organizations in addition to our own efforts in order to curb this pandemic. Yet today, more than half of our people live below the poverty line. What is it that we are not doing? Could it be worthwhile looking into the attitudes or the psyches of these so-called impoverished people to find out why it is they remain poor despite receiving aid through various means. And, I, and I'm sure most of you guys have, have, have taken part in blanket drives and food drives. Ladies and gentlemen, instead of seeking European solutions to African problems, it is time we found African solutions to African problems. 
my aim is to promote academic research, not just to satisfy some academic requirement, but to invoke young minds to think outside the box and to promote change or, or provoke change to outdated policies and mentalities and hopefully solve Namibian problems so that one day when we are asked about the top in inventions of our time, we can safely answer that some of these inventions were thought of by Namibians. Namibians like Michael Nenkavu, whose research identified a plant in, in Namibia that could potentially hold the cure for cancer. Or Namibians like Joanna Amunyela, who is among the first in the world to investigate the role that specific proteins have on the development of cancer. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the importance of academic research in our community. Thank you.